Hey everyone, I've got another video for you. This one is some super fun Halloween nail art and I loved it. It was so great. So funny story about this particular nail art. Um, this was done on a Saturday morning and I had this client came in at nine o'clock and right before I left my house and headed to the salon, I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw this post by Polished Pinkies here in Utah and Sarah, um, the owner of Polished Pinkies is just like, in my opinion, the queen of nail art. She is so amazing and I hope to one day be as good as her. Um, but I saw this picture and I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cute. I love them. Um, and I showed them to my husband and he was like, oh yeah, those are awesome. And I think I said something like, oh, I wish I could do art this well, you know, things like something like that. So I got to work like 10 minutes later and my very first client at nine o'clock, she hands me that same picture and she's like, Hey, can we do these? And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> what am I going to do? Um, but you know, fight or flight, fight or flight. And I fought, so we did it. And you know, as much as they aren't as quite as good as the original, I still was pretty happy with how they turned out. So yeah, I mean, I just kind of pushed myself and kind of stepped out of my comfort zone and, and we did it. So they ended up really, really cute. So I'm just going to say I sped this video way up. It is so fast because, I mean, it took me, it took me 40 minutes to do the nail art alone. The acrylic application and prep and everything took way less time than the nail art did. It took a long time to do this nail art. So... I just wanted to make sure to get in as much as I could with this video without making it too long for you. So I've already removed her old previous set, prepped and primed her nails, applied a clear base at the regrowth area, and now I'm going in with colored acrylic. So on the pinky, we decided to do Glam and Glitz Your Spatial is what it's called. It's a glow-in-the-dark acrylic, the purple one. This pink one is also a glow-in-the-dark. It is called Electrifying. And then this white one is yet another glow-in-the-dark from Glam and Glitz, and it's called Afterglow. I love all of their glow-in-the-dark colors. They're so much fun. And I just thought it would add a fun little touch to this set to add some glow-in-the-dark. So, and she loved them. She absolutely loved them. So yeah, they turned out really good. And I am also going to add a little bit of glitter to the back of whatever nails that we didn't actually put the nail art on. We just added like a little glitter fade right at the cuticle. So that was fun as well. The brush I'm using is my Light Elegance eight brush, number eight. It's a little bit smaller. I like to use a smaller brush just because then I don't end up with bulky nails. I just can use smaller beads and spread it out, make it thin, do thin layers, and then my nails don't end up bulky. So I like smaller brushes. Then this color is called Firefly, also by Glam and Glitz and also Glow in the Dark. So yeah, turned out good. We mix up the colors just a little bit from the original design because she wanted a little bit more symmetry than the original design had. So I honestly, I love uh, asymmetrical designs myself, but she liked them to be a little bit more symmetrical between her two hands. So we mix up the colors a little bit from what the original photo had. And I'm just trying to make sure there's no marbling. This particular colored acrylic marbles quite a bit as you play with it it kind of, you can kind of settle the marble out of it but and then this glitter is called lavender by uh it's one of young nails imagination art glitters it's kind of a fine super sparkly glitter and i'm just dipping it into a teeny teeny tiny piece of uh cjp crystal glass and then into the glitter to kind of give it just a really thin wash over the nail so it doesn't spread out too much and it doesn't completely cover the nail. So kind of find a good balance in between there. 
Then this one is Hologram, also one of the Young Nails Imagination Art glitters. I love the hollow sparkle to it. It's great. And then this one is yet again another Young Nails Imagination Art glitter, and it is called Crush. I'm pretty sure. I think that's what it's called. But we just kind of picked something that would go with the base colors. And I thought they turned out pretty, pretty good. And then I'm going to go back and cap all of these nails in CJP crystal glass so that when I file them and shape them, I don't lose any of that glitter that I just put on there. And it also helps build up the apex, keep these nails strong, and keep them from breaking. These Glam & Glitz colors are strength powders, so you don't absolutely have to cap them in crystal glass, but I still like to. It's kind of a kind of a thing for me. I like to keep, kind of sandwich the color in between two layers of crystal glass. I feel like it gives me the most strength. Originally, we were going to put the nail art on the middle finger and the ring finger, but then I just wasn't thinking and I put the glitter on that ring finger instead of keeping it blank for the art. So we just we just went with it and ended up putting the black swirl on the index finger instead. So all that time we spent on making them symmetrical, they didn't end up symmetrical anyway. It's fine. <laughs> And I went ahead and filed and shaped them off camera. And now I'm going in with Light Elegance Primary Black Gel Paint. And I'm using my thumb palette. I just think it's really helpful to be able to fill your brush and have a smooth amount in your brush instead of having like a big glob on the end and everything. So that's... That's how I like to load my brush. I'm just drawing this little cauldron here. The, sorry, my head's in the way. The art sort of is pretty self-explanatory. So I think for the most part, I'll just let you pretty much watch the rest of this. Um, the brushes you see me using are the Light Elegance Selena Ryden Nail Art Brush Collection. This is the block brush. Kind of helps fill in those big gaps. And then this one that I'm using is the swirly brush. It's my main one that I use for detail work. But I kind of switch back and forth between all of them. Most of them anyway. And yeah, I'm just going to keep switching back and forth with my hands. Have her flash curing the design each time I switch hands just so that if I do mess up a line or something, I can just wipe it off without having to wipe off the whole design. So we're just going to kind of go back and forth and work on the design. So, and I did speed it up. I sped this whole video way up. So just know I don't actually work this fast. So right there, we're doing a little spider web. So I'm just kind of starting with the main lines of the spider web and then having her cure that. And then I've done the cauldron on this one. And then I'm going to go in with some Light Elegance Neon Green uh, gel paint. And I'm just kind of putting some random lines in there. Not, not going to make them any like really specific. Just kind of right on the along the top of the cauldron and then down near the bottom. So... And then I've got some alcohol on my block brush and I'm just kind of tapping that green in, just kind of blend it out so that it looks like it's kind of green steam and kind of bubbling over and falling down the side of the cauldron. And then we're back to the spider web. I'm going to add some little connected pieces between these main lines to make it look like a spider web.
Now we're back to that cauldron nail and from the original design it said it's like it said brew on the side of the cauldron so we're gonna start with as many letters as we can fit on there which ended up being just the b-r-w-e b-r-e not b-r-w b-r-e just being really careful to draw those letters in as proportionally as possible It's been a couple weeks since I've done this set and I hadn't edited the video, so it took me a sec. And in this part we're doing the hat. I needed more gel on my thumb. The witch's hat. This one, this and the feet were probably my least favorite part of my version of this set. I just, I kind of struggled with making the hat look like an actual hat. Um, definitely something I could have done better if I had a little bit more time to prepare. Um, I, I'm weird like that. I like to, if, if my clients send me a picture that like, Hey, can you do this? I never want to tell them that I can't. Um, even if I'm not super confident in my nail art skills, I will, do whatever I can to learn that particular type of nail art so that when my client does come, I'm ready for it. So like a couple of weeks ago, one of my clients told me she wanted to do foxes on her nails and I just so enthusiastically was like, yay, let's do it. But inside I was terrified because I'm like, the thing is going to look like a gerbil or something. Like I don't even know how to do a fox. So I took all my stuff home over the weekend and my husband helped me. My husband is such a good artist and so he can see things where I try to do something and I can't see why it looks wrong. It looks wrong, but I can't figure out why. And so he'll look at it and he'll be like, okay, so you need to fix this or change this or, or move this around. So he really helps me get a better perspective on how, why I'm messing it up basically, and then help me correct it so that I'm doing it right. So he kind of helped me work through that with the foxes um, the other weekend. And it was, it was great. I mean, the foxes that I did ended up turning out super cute. So that practice was really good for me. But with this one, I only had about 10 minutes of, Ooh, that's a cute design to, Hey, do this design. And I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so we rolled with it and we did it. So, but I do think that if I had a little more time to practice, this hat would have looked a little better, but we did what we could. Sometimes you just need to erase a little bit of something in there, which was what I was just doing there. But I didn't want to take off the whole hat, so I just grabbed my block brush and put some alcohol on it and just erased that little bit that I needed to erase. Trying to figure out what's coming next <laughs> without getting paint all over her finger. I knew I was going to need that black again, so I didn't want to take it off my thumb. But then I ended up taking it off anyway, so <laughs> kind of go back and forth. And here we're just doing like a little swirl starting at the center of the nail and going out like a vortex looking thingy or something, whatever you want to call it. Swirls are hard. I struggle with swirls. I guess I just don't know how to do the brush the right way or something and just, they always look lopsided <laughs> to me, but it turned out cute.
And here I'm just putting a cute little flower on the brim of the hat. I've already put the pink ribbon across the hat and this is just another different pink. I'm just putting a little flower there on the brim. She's gonna cure that. Now I'm using Mission Control from Young Nails. Clutch is the color. It's a brown one to do a little broom on the side. Making some little bristles down there at the bottom. And putting some little black dots in the center of that flower. And then adding some little leaves to go with the flower. Just some little little green accent for the top of that, that little brim of that hat. And going back in with more black and doing the little feet. And right here, I'm actually switching to my shorty brush, also part of that same brush collection. It's just a little bit smaller and a little bit finer because I wanted to do some really fine lines to just to do the outlines of the legs so that I could still color them in with the stocking colors and they didn't look too overly thick. Um, but then that third one I made way too thick, so I had to go back in and erase part of the line, but it still worked out okay.
And then right here on the original design, this little spider guy was hanging from the point of the hat. But with all of the stuff we had on that nail already, there just wasn't room for him. But he was just so darn cute and I couldn't leave him off. So I was just like, we've got some extra space on this cauldron one. Can we have him hanging next to the cauldron? And she was like, sure. So we put him on there. He was just way too cute. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't omit the spider because he was adorable. And he just finished it off and made it look just right. And now I'm using CJP Tech Free Top Gloss to finish these off and just bring them to life. They just turned out really cute. I was super excited about them. And I'm glad that you have watched this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've left a clip at the end to just kind of show you what the finished result looked like, all top glossed and everything. Um, and I hope to see you in my next video. Please comment, like, subscribe, whatever. Do all the YouTube things and I will see you in my next one. Talk to you later.